In this video, we are going to explore how to use the lightning surface template from lightning effects to create stunning abstract lightning effect in Blender. Lightning effects is our latest tool designed to help you build procedural effects quickly and easily, all powered by jump nodes. Let's jump right in. I drag and drop the template into the scene. It comes with a simple preview mesh. If we check the modifiers tab, you'll see there are two modifiers. The first one is our lightning effect. And unlike other templates, this one combines both the lightning and machine and material settings into a single modifier. The second modifier is labeled tutorial. It's just a reference link for this particular video. I'll update it with the proper link later so you can easily revisit the tutorial in the future if needed. But since we don't need it right now, I'll go ahead and delete it. To start the effect, first we need to define the starting point of the lightning. This is based on the location of the lightning FX object in the scene. So I'll place the 3D cursor where I want the lightning to converge and move the effect object to that position. In this case, I want all the lightning curves to merge into this point on this simple human mesh. Let's set it up in the modifier. At the top, we need to specify the emitter type. Since we are using a static mesh, I'll leave it set to still. Next, under the emitter section, I'll assign our human mesh as the emitter object. We can't see anything just yet. That's because the effect doesn't know where the lightning curve should end. By default, it looks for a vertex group or attribute called end vertices. Since our emitter doesn't have one yet, let's create one. I'll select the human mesh go to the vertex group panel and create a new group. Let's name it 1. You can name it anything you like. Next, I'll go into edit mode and make sure nothing is selected. You can manually choose the endpoints but for now, I'll use select select random to quickly pick a few vertices. There are too many selected by default so I'll open this panel and lower the ratio until I get just a few. Once I'm happy with the selection, I'll click Assign to add those vertices to our group. Now back in the lightning surface modifier, under End Vertices, I'll enter the name of the vertex group we just made. And there it is. Lightning curves now appear generated right on the mesh. Now let's move on to the path settings which controls how the lightning curves are generated. By default, the probability value is set to low. This is intentional. If you select too many end vertices, a high probability could crash Blender. So I set it to a low value, but you can increase it to get more curves. Feel free to move it around to change the focal point of the lightning. By the way, important note, your emitter must be a single mesh. If it is made of multiple disconnected pieces, this template won't be able to generate proper connections between them. Next is Path Noise. By default, curves follow the shortest path to the endpoints, but this setting introduces persistence, like adding traffic to the shortest route, encouraging the lightning to take alternate paths. Path Roughness adds further distortion, creating more chaotic, jagged lines. Then we have resolution. This controls the detail level of the curves. Lower values mean higher resolution, which gives smoother lightning. I'll set it back to something like 0.2 meters. Now let's talk about two of the most important settings, optimized and smooth. The optimized option is enabled by default to improve the performance. It automatically finds overlapping lightning paths and merges them keeping the effect clean and lightweight. If I disable it, you'll see all the individual curves being generated, which can look great but it's heavier on performance. Optimize option allows you to tune the look of the effect easily. And then if you want, you can enable the non-optimized version for more and better looking paths. I'll re-enable optimize for now. Finally, the smooth toggle does exactly what it says. It subdivides and smooths out the lightning curves for a cleaner look. 
then you can change the seed value to further randomize the look. Next up are the distortion settings which work very similar to the other lightning effects templates we have covered in previous videos. Here this pushes the lightning either inward or outward from the surface of the emitter mesh based on its normals. Now if I go to material view you can see the effect with its glow. I have enabled the real time compositor to add some bloom to the scene. I covered how to set that up in earlier videos. Let's smooth the mesh out and hit play. I'll also hide the emitter mesh from the viewport so we can focus on just the lightning. At this point it's really about experimenting. Play around with the path, distortion and material settings until you get a look that fits your scene. Here I can play with the resolution as well. Now let's take a look at the non-optimized version of the effect. It generates a lot more lightning curves which gives a richer more chaotic look but it can be heavier on performance. In this case I might need to reduce the glow a bit. You can smooth them as well. Next I'll go ahead and reduce the curve thickness. My go to value is around 0.08. Then I add a tiny bit of constant thickness. This is what I called the lossless version of the effect. The optimized version while more performance friendly does merge and remove some data to keep things lighter. But honestly in about 90% of the cases you won't notice the difference visually. This effect isn't just for lightning or electricity based visuals. You can use it for abstract animation or even stylized motion graphics. If you are curious how to build something like this from scratch, I made a tutorial a little while ago, feel free to check that out. Here you can use this striking value to trim the curves. And if you want to flip the curve direction, just enable the strike reverse. Now let's talk about how to optimize the effect even further. One of the first thing you can do to optimize performance is to simply bake the lightning curves once you are happy with the look. To do that, I open a new window and switch it to Geometry Node Editor with the effect selected. Here, like the previous video, we have highlighted nodes. The first one is for baking proxies when using animated meshes, which we don't need yet. The second one is the one we want. It lets you bake the path settings so the system doesn't have to recalculate them on every frame. Since I'm working with a still mesh, I keep the mode set to still, choose a frame and hit bake. Now the lightning path is locked in and only the distortion and visual effects are calculated live. This can greatly improve playback speed, especially in more complex scenes. But remember, if you want to make further adjustment to the path settings, you have to delete the bake first. Now let's see how this works with animated meshes. I'll disable the effect for now and re-enable the emitter object. I don't have any armature animations here, so I'll quickly create a simple transform animation. I enable the auto keyframe button, play the animation and move the mesh around for a bit. Then I adjust the keyframes in the timeline and disable auto keying when I'm done. To make the motion smoother, I'll jump into the graph editor and smooth out animation curves a bit. We need the GeoNode editor back again. When dealing with the animated meshes, if you want the path distribution to remain consistent throughout the animation while still following the mesh, you will first need to set the emitter type to animated. Then you can adjust your path settings however you like. Next, just like in the last video, go to the first highlighted bake node and hit bake. This will generate a proxy mesh that locks in the emitter's shape across frames, helping the lightning maintain its structure. Then you can further optimize it by baking the path, this time for the entire animation. Otherwise, you get this. So if you are going to bake this, make sure 
to change this to animation when using animated emitters. And that's it. That's how we use the lightning surface template in lightning effects. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.